so we left here in the previous video prefrontal cortex uh, what complications would occur if there is lesion at this level there would be frontal lobe syndrome my friends frontal lobe is uh, associated with our personality and uh, the symptoms and uh, the signs which are related to personality just like uh, for example if we go to a party and uh, we will eat there in a very sophisticated manner but its lesion will cause hyperphagia impulsivity loss of empathy sorry impaired executive functions a kinetic mutism seen in frontotemporal dementia so the frontal eye field i look towards the brain lesion away from side of hemiplegia seen in middle cerebral artery stroke paramedian pontine reticular formation i look away from the brain lesion towards the side of hemiplegia frontal eye field paramedian pontine reticular formation and these are the two lesions which are related to eye and uh, uh, where the eye will see if we have this lesion so the next is dominant parietal cortex gertzman syndrome a graphia a calculia finger agnosia and left right disorientation non dominant parietal cortex hemi spatial neglect syndrome agnosia of the contralateral side of world the contralateral side of the world will not Mm, feel the patient will not feel the contrary side of the world gertzman syndrome it is uh, a graphia patient is uh, oh i have to see first what is a graphia in a calculia yes the very easy names that look like uh, a graphia means he is unable to write a calculia he is unable to calculate something finger agnosia uh, he is uh, unable to feel something with his fingers and left right disorientation basal ganglia tremors at rest as you know basal ganglia most of uh, the uh, motor inputs are inhibited here so if there is lesion there would be increased motion like tremor at rest chorea athetosis seen in parkinson disease huntington disease subthalamic nucleus contralateral hemiballismus what is hemiballismus just wait i will see and tell you Hemiplegic is a hyperkinetic involuntary movement disorder characterized by intermittent sudden violent involuntary flinging or ballistic high amplitude movement involving the ipsilateral arm and leg caused by dysfunction in the central nervous system of the contralateral side so it means hemiplegic hemiplegic is an intermittent sudden movement so mammillary bodies bilateral lesions wernick korsakoff syndrome due to thiamine deficiency sorry amygdala bilateral lesions kluver bucky syndrome disinhibition hyperphagia hypersexuality 
हाइपर ओरलिटी सीन इन हर्पी सिंप्लेक्स वन इनकेफ्लाइटस हिपोकैंपस बाइलेट्रल लीजन एंटेरोग्रेड एमनेजिया नो न्यू मेमोरी फॉर्मेशन seen in alzheimer disease so people these three lesions are bilateral and uh, mammillary bodies as we already know and uh, read in the alcohol uh, topic that uh, due to alcohol consumption there is thymine deficiency and uh, there is a lesion at the mammillary bodies which result in the wernick korsakoff syndrome amygdala we have already know that amygdala is related to emotions how our emotions and uh, sexuality is also uh, an emotion hyperphagia is the sense of uh, um, feeling hungry hyper orality he will speak a lot hippocampus Yes, but it is also bilateral lesion and anterograde amnesia. Hippocampus we have already studied in the uh, behavioral sciences book that hippocampus is related or involved in making memory. So if it damages, there would be no making of memory as it is in anterograde amnesia. It is seen in Alzheimer disease. dorsal midbrain perinod syndrome often due to pineal gland tumor perinod syndrome we will discuss it later perinod syndrome reticular activating system reduced level of arousal and wakefulness coma medial longitudinal fasciculus internuclear ophthalmoplegia impaired adduction of ipsilateral eye nystagmus of contralateral eye with abduction seen in multiple sclerosis cerebral hemisphere intention tremor limb ataxia loss of balance as we already know cerebral hemisphere is involved in our parents damage to cerebellum ipsilateral deficit fall towards the side of lesion and uh, cerebellar hemisphere are laterally located affect lateral limbs cerebellar vermis truncal ataxia wide base truncal cellular gate nystagmus dysarthria degeneration associated with chronic alcohol overuse vermis is centrally located affect central body abnormal motor posturing it means uh, the body have uh, uh, posture which are related to motor system or uh, you can say abnormal motor movement which result in our abnormal posture decorticate where there is flexion at the upper limb and lower limb extension and uh, in uh, the cerebrate upper and lower limb extension we first saw this that first we should know what is the abnormal movement so the site of lesion is above red nucleus often cerebellar cortex that's why it is called decorticate and uh, here is the between red and the vestibular nuclei brain stem over active tracts rebro spinal and vestibulo spinal tracts are over active which result in this posture and in this only vestibulo spinal tracts are over active
so presentation we have seen there is flexion at the forearm or these upper limbs and extension at the lower limb and here is the upper and lower limb extension notes your hands are near the core heart worse prognosis yes the decorticate decelerate rigidity have worse prognosis very 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 important ischemic brain disease or stroke irreversible neuronal injury begins after 5 minute of hypoxia most vulnerable areas are hippocampus ca1 region neocortex cerebellum purkinje cells watershed area vulnerable hippos need pure water so hippos hippocampus need neocortex pure mean purkinje cells in the cerebellum and water mean the watershed areas stroke imaging non contrast ct to exclude hemorrhage so the first investigation we will do when the patient will come with some signs of limb weakness is the ct scan before tissue plasminogen activator can be given ct detects ischemic changes in 6 to 24 hours diffusion weight mri can detect ischemic changes within 33 to 30 minutes but if there is hemorrhage then it will be diagnosed with the ct scan very clearly so time since ischemic events histological features when there are 12 to 24 hours eosinophilic cytoplasm the cytoplasm would have eosinophilic staining and uh, pyknotic nuclei red neurons when there are 24 to 72 hours there would be necrosis plus neutrophil would be seen in the cells 3 to 5 days macrophages micro gray gray would occur there and uh, at the time of 1 to 2 weeks there would be reactive gliosis astrocytes plus vascular proliferation and when there are more than 2 weeks there would be glial scar ischemic stroke first there would be ischemia then it will lead to infarction and at the end there would be leak effective necrosis so we should see these changes again at 12 to 24 hour or within the duration of one day we would see eosinophilic cytoplasm plus pyknotic nuclei red nucleus 24 to 72 hour necrosis plus neutrophils and 3 to 5 days macrophages 1 to 2 weeks reactive gliosis plus vascular proliferation and uh, at more than 2 weeks glial scar in ischemic stroke there would be ischemia first then infarct infarction and then leak effective necrosis three types thrombotic embolic hypoxic so we see it one by one so first one is thrombotic due to a clot forming directly at the site of infarction commonly the middle cerebral artery so the clot will form at the site of infarction usually occur over a ruptured atherosclerotic plaque embolic due to an embolus from the another part of body 
can affect multiple vascular territories for example the clot may move due to atrial fibrillation carotid artery stenosis deep vein thrombosis clot with patent foramen ovale paradoxical embolism infective The next one is the hypoxic due to systemic hypoperfusion or hypoxemia common during cardiovascular surgeries tend to affect watershed areas. What is the treatment? Treatment is tissue plasminogen activator if patient come within 3 to 4.5 hours of onset and no hemorrhage risk of hemorrhage and or thrombectomy if large artery occlusion reduces risk with medical therapy e.g. aspirin, clopidogrel, optimum control of blood pressure blood sugars, lipids, smoking cessation and and treatment condition that increase risk are the atrial fibrillation carotid artery stenosis so you should keep it in mind first we will give tissue plasminogen activator if there is uh, no hemorrhage history or risk we can also do thrombectomy if large artery occlusion and uh, uh, to reduce the risk we can give uh, aspirin and clopidogrel so the next one is transient ischemic attack it is the brief reversible episode of focal neurological deficit without acute infarction so negative MRI which means MRI would be normal with the majority resolving in less than 15 minute ischemia e.g. embolus small vessel stenosis may present with amorosis, amorosis figax transient visual loss due to retinal artery emboli from the carotid artery disease so this thing you should remember what is the amaurosis fugax it is the transient visual loss due to retinal artery emboli from the carotid artery disease so the next thing is cerebral edema it is the fluid accumulation in the brain parenchyma increases it increases cerebral intracerebral pressure types there are cytotoxic edema and vasogenic edema cytotoxic edema means intracellular fluid accumulation due to osmotic shift right uh, for example uh, sodium potassium atpase dysfunction increase intracellular sodium caused by ischemia hyperammonemia and uh, uh, syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion this can also happen if we overload the patient with uh, normal saline infusion where uh, the patient can have uh, uh, sodium levels in the range of uh, 155 to 160 170 millimole these uh, conditions vasogenic edema extracellular fluid accumulation due to disruption of blood brain barrier increased permeability caused by ischemia at later stages trauma hemorrhage inflammation tumor as it is seen in this picture tumor and this side is showing edema which is vasogenic
so effects of stroke what would happen if we have stroke so all these symptoms depend upon the area where the stroke has occurred anterior cerebral artery it the area of lesion would be motor and the sensory cortices lower limbs would be more effective symptoms contralateral contralateral paralysis and sensory loss lower limb urinary incontinence lower limb urinary incontinence so contralateral paralysis and sensory loss would be at the level of lower limb and it is associated with urinary incontinence middle cerebral artery motor and sensory cortici are involved upper limb and face temporal lobe involved which have the vernic area and frontal lobe which have the broca area vernic area is associated with the understanding of the voices we receive and broca area is our speech area so contralateral paralysis and sensory loss lower face and upper limb aphasia if in dominant usually left hemisphere hemi neglect if lesion effect non dominant usually right hemisphere notes vernic aphasia is associated with the right superior quadrant visual field defect due to temporal lobe involvement lenticulostriate artery the lesion is at the level of striatum and the internal capsule contralateral paralysis absence of cortical signs neglect aphasia and visual field loss it is a pure motor stroke most common common location at lacunar infarct of lacunar infarct due to micro edema and helain artery arteriosclerosis lipohyalinosis secondary to unmanaged hypertension so there are three types of stroke which are related to anterior cerebral artery middle cerebral artery and uh, lenticulostriate artery and these are the anterior circulations now come to posterior circulations so posterior cerebral artery as it supplies the occipital lobe so the main involvement of is the occipital lobe the symptoms we will have would be related to contralateral hemi anopia with macular sparring ataxia ataxia without agraphia dominant hemisphere extending to splenium of corpus callosum prosopagnosia non dominant hemisphere so basilar artery which is related to pons medulla and lower mid brain so if reticular activating system is spared consciousness is preserved basilar artery can also cause locked in syndrome locked in the basement it may also affect cortico spinal and the cortico bulbar tracts which would result in quadriplegia loss of voluntary facial except blinking 
mouth and tongue movement it also involve ocular cranial nerve nuclei paramedian pontine reticular formation which would result in loss of horizontal but not vertical eye movement very complicated basal artery is involved at the level at three levels at the brain level it may involve the pons medulla and lower midbrain as related to tracts it involves the corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts and then it involves the ocular cranial nuclei paramedian pontine reticular formation so if in pons medulla and lower brain involvement if areas is spared consciousness is preserved and if it involve the corticospinal and the corticobulbar tracts then quadriplegia loss of voluntary facial except blinking and mouth and tongue involvement if cranial nerve is involved then loss of horizontal but not vertical eye movement so anterior inferior cerebellar artery facial nerve nuclei it supplies the facial nerve nuclei so it will damage the facial nerve nuclei which will result in the paralysis of face lower motor neuron lesion versus upper motor neuron lesion in the cortical setrocs decrease lagrimation decrease elevation decrease stays from the anterior two third of the tongue if it, it more involve the vestibular nuclei spinothalamic tracts and spinal trigeminal nuclei then it would result in vomiting as vestibular nuclei are associated with vomiting vertigo and nystagmus there would be decrease pain and temperature sensation as it is carried by the thalam uh, spinothalamic tracts from the contralateral body yes the next thing is the spinothalamic fibers middle and the inferior cerebellar peduncles inner ear ipsilateral horner syndrome sympathetic fibers are associated with the horner syndrome ipsilateral horner syndrome middle and the inferior cerebellar peduncles cerebellar peduncles so mean it, these are related to our uh, parents so its damage would result in ipsilateral ataxia and dysmetria if inner ear is involved this would result in the sensory neural deafness and vertigo this is the lateral pontine syndrome facial nerve nuclei affected are specific to anterior inferior cerebellar ligaments so here comes our last page of today effects of stroke continued posterior inferior cerebellar artery also called the pica artery it as it supplies the nucleus ambiguus cranial lobe 9 10 and 11 this would result in dysphagia hoarseness of voice related to cranial lobe 10 and uh, decrease gag reflex which is related to cranial nerve 10 and hiccups it is lateral medullary syndrome wellenberg syndrome vestibular nuclei lateral spinothalamic tract spinal trigeminal nuclei vomiting vertigo nystagmus decrease pain and temperature sensation and contralateral body ipsilateral face things are becoming very complicated if we have some kind of this yes so oh, wow lateral medullary syndrome 
Wellenberg syndrome. I should make it red. It also supplies these sympathetic fibers, so it is involved in ipsilateral Horner syndrome, ipsilateral ataxia, if it is involvement of inferior cerebral peduncle and dysmetria. Don't pick lame horse that cannot eat. Don't pick pica artery lame lateral middle ear syndrome horse hoarseness that cannot eat this video. Wow. Very important. So we can cover these symptoms which are related to this artery. Anterior spinal artery. What would occur if there is a stroke at this level? It involves the corticospinal tract, it involves the medial laminiscus, it involves the caudal medulla, hypoglossal nerve. So, there would be contralateral paralysis. upper and lower limb involvement and uh, decrease contralateral proprioception in result of medial laminiscus lesion and ipsilateral hypoglossal dysfunction tongue deviates ipsilaterally as a result of caudal medulla which have the nuclei hypoglossal now medial medullary syndrome Aunts love M and M. Aunts mean anterior spinal artery. Love M and M medial medullary syndrome caused by medial medullary syndrome is from medial medullary syndrome we can remember the medial sky and the caudal medulla hoarseness of sorry hypoglossal nerve involvement. Neonatal interventricular hemorrhages bleeding into the ventricle arrow neonatal interventricular hemorrhage yes bleeding into the ventricles this a picture shows the blood in the ventricle so increased risk in premature and birth low birth weight babies originate in germinal matrix a highly vascularized layer within the subventricular zone so it originates in the germinal matrix a highly vascularized within the subventricular zone it reduces glial fiber support and impaired auto regulation of blood pressure in premature infant yes this is the pathophysiology there is decreased glial fiber support and impaired regulation of blood pressure in premature infants can occur with altered level of consciousness can present with altered level of consciousness bulging fontanelli hypotension severe coma severe may occur hypotension patient may be in coma bulging fontanelli so here it ends our lecture these are very important topics and you should have to remember these structures all some of these we have mnemonics and uh, some of them we should have to remember without the mnemonics so we will meet in the next lecture okay bye bye